my fellow Angelites, a pleasant morning to you all. And welcome to our new academic year, 2021-2022, and to the pandemic version of our General Assembly. We come to that point in time when we welcome a new academic year, the second year under the pandemic that has disrupted our operations while at the same time opened our eyes to the opportunities and the new competencies that we never thought we would have or would pursue. We just ended a very difficult year when many of our plans have been set aside and we shifted our priorities to ensure the survival of the university. Today, in my annual State of the University address, I would like to report to you about a number of topics, a few topics of interest to us all. I will first update you on our enrollment picture. As a tuition-dependent organization, enrollment is the principal driver, not only of our operational condition, but also of our long-term sustainability. You just saw an audiovisual presentation of the president's report to the board of trustees. Therefore, my next task is to build upon that report by updating you on the highlights of our recent progress on our four strategic objectives that would become the basis as well of my next report for the Board of Trustees. I will conclude by sharing you my thoughts on achieving herd immunity at Holy Angel University in order that we could safely welcome back students to campus. And if we run out of time for an expanded Q&A due to our morning program that is quite full, I will ask our Human Resource Management Office to find a way to get your questions so that I may answer them. So let me begin my enrollment report by thanking each of you for answering the call of the university to make increasing enrollment everyone's business. And because of your collective efforts, we have now enrolled over 14,000 students, which represents 82% of last year's total enrollment. Although our enrolled students are still about 1,500 students less than our goal for this year, we have achieved more than the minimum level of enrollment that will enable us to avoid untenable financial losses and decisions this year. And as of yesterday, Wednesday, July 14, we have enrolled close to 2,500 first-time freshmen. That represents 86% of our college freshman enrollment last year and is short of goal by only about 200 enrolled freshmen this year. As we allow late registration, I am confident that we will eventually close this gap. So we are not yet out of the woods when it comes to generating enrollment. On the positive side, the academic profile of our college freshmen has significantly improved over the past five years. Our testing center tracked the grade point averages at the end of our freshmen's first year in college. And according to them, these improvements are statistically significant. Our freshmen who entered college in June of 2014 had an average cumulative GPA of 2.34 at the end of their first year. That average year-end GPA went down or rather improved starting the 2018-2019 cohort which was the first year under the new curriculum post K-12, and also the first year under competitive admissions of the university, and further down to 1.99 and 
and 1.58. Remember that in this measure, less is more. Turning now to recent updates on our first strategic objective, academic quality and organizational excellence. Let me report on our progress in academic quality assurance through specialized accreditation of our degree programs. Congratulations to the schools of arts and sciences, business and accountancy, computing, education, human uh, hospitality and tourism management, and nursing and allied medical sciences for the PAASCO level three accreditation received by 10 of their degree programs. I have issued a similar challenge to the School of Engineering and Architecture for them to strive for the same outcome for its engineering programs that are currently level two accredited. Congratulations as well to the College of Criminal Justice Education and Forensics, the School of Arts and Sciences, and the School of Education for being the first recipients at HAU of AUNQA inter International Certification for four degree programs. This year, four programs in the School of Computing and the School of Engineering and Architecture will have four of their programs evaluated by AUNQA. Thus far, we have 32 degree programs including 10 graduate programs with at least level one accreditation by either PAASCO or PACOCOA. In addition, 10 degree programs have either international accreditation by, AACS, by IACBE or ACPA, ACPHA, or AUNQA international certification. Further, five programs are candidates for PACOCOA accreditation. And as you can see in the footnote, eligibility for Center of Excellence or Center of Development designation, as well as eligibility to offer new graduate degree programs is limited to programs that have PASCO level three or PACOCOA level three, international accreditation or international certification. Turning now to recent updates on our second strategic objective, which is authentic instrument for countryside development. Let me report on our outreach. In the interest of time, I will not talk about the external visibility that has continuously been generated by our Center for Kapampangan Studies or the HAU School for Professional Education and Lifelong Learning or House Pell. Rather, I will focus on our school-based outreach to advance technology-based entrepreneurship in the region. About three to four years ago, the School of Business and Accountancy in the School of Engineering and Architecture worked with the Office of the President to develop a comprehensive proposal for an interdisciplinary technology business incubator, which we now refer to as Encephalon. Funded three years ago and launched two years ago, Encephalon has incubated a total of 26 startups, which created more than 200 jobs, generated 29 million pesos worth of sales revenue, and attracted 10 million pesos worth in grant funding. That is our contribution or one of our contributions to countryside development. And to accelerate the development and documentation of intellectual property by our faculty, students, and external clientele, the Intellectual Property of our Organization of the Philippines, or IPOPhil, awarded our university a franchise two years ago to operate an innovation and technology support office, or ITSO. Our ITSO recently attracted 3 million pesos worth of funding from DOST Pichard to establish knowledge, innovation, and technology transfer processes at the university. And most recently, IPOFIL, inspired by our pioneering professional science master's program in cybersecurity, challenged us 
to develop the country's first PSM in intellectual property management and markets. Three schools, business and accountancy, computing, and engineering and architecture are leading the development of this interdisciplinary program. Turning now to our recent updates in our third strategic objective, to be a great university to work for. And in the interest of time, I will not mention the various webinars that our Human Resource Management Office has organized for employee development, as well as our initiatives for employee health and safety. Let me report on our most recent modern think, which is the great, university, the great colleges to work for survey of the Chronicle of Higher Education. We have administered the Modern Think survey since 2016, and we have seen an improvement in response rates from 59% in 2017, continuously to 88% in 2021. We have also seen a pattern of improvement in the percentage of positive responses from 77% in 2017 to 89% in 2021. Holy Angel University has outperformed the USA honor roll, which consists of the benchmark, the great universities to work for in the United States. And during the first year of the pandemic, these benchmark schools had the year over year decline in percentage of positive responses from 79% to 78% while we maintained that particular measure of performance. Turning now to recent updates on our fourth strategic objective, which is faithful Catholic education. Our university's contribution to the celebration of the International Year of St. Joseph is the series of Anluagi online talks on St. Joseph, patron of the Universal Church. And thus far, we have had three online talks since March, of 20, uh, since March 19, when Bishop Ambo David, who is now the CBCP president, as you all know, delivered our first talk. In the area of policy development, ICFSI is working with the Office of Academic Affairs on the vertical articulation of the CLE curriculum from basic education to college and to graduate school. And also to complement the campus implementation of the, space, the Safe Spaces Act of 2019, our Board of Trustees approved in March 9 of 2020 just before the imposition of the enhanced community quarantine last year, the university policy on diversity and inclusion. This policy statement reinforces the university's position on non-discrimination in harmony with the Catholic identity and mission of the university. Diversity, equity, and inclusion are inseparable from Catholic social teaching particularly on the dignity of the human person, an option for the vulnerable. Every human being is created in the image of God and redeemed by Jesus Christ, and therefore is invaluable and worthy of respect as a member of the human family. In approaching the issue of diversity, equity, and inclusion, we draw inspiration from St. Bonaventure, Bishop and Doctor of the Church, whose memorial was a theme of our Mass earlier this morning. Saint Bonaventure completely understood that the passages of Scripture that are demanding and require unconditional following to Christ, or commitment to unconditional following to Christ, are balanced by our Lord's compassionate understanding of our human weakness and our human frailties. Finally, I would like to share with you highlights of the national conversation 
about COVID-19, the various vaccines, herd immunity, and our university's prospects for the return of face-to-face -face instruction. Much of the information I will share comes from the national vaccination update, which I attend every month. Every month, an increasing number of vaccine doses from an increasing number of vaccine manufacturers arrive in the Philippines. By the end of next month, by the end of August, the Philippines would have adequate supply to vaccinate at least 22 million individuals because of the arrival by that time of 44,545,870 doses. Novavax, which is the protein vaccine that HAU has a purchase agreement with Unilab, is expected to arrive starting September. That is why it's not included in this particular timeline that you have in front of you. Now, let's take a look at statistics here, but vaccination statistics. Of the statistics in this page, one information that really matters to us is that 70% to 80% vaccination rate, by that is meant 70% to 80% of the entire population, not only the vaccine eligible population, the entire population. That 70 to 80% vaccination rate is the threshold for herd immunity against the coronavirus. And the other piece of information that is vital here is the average daily attack rate or ADAR, which is the number of new cases in the city over a two week period divided by its population. If the ADAR for a city or town is more than seven, that city or town has a high risk of infection. The ADAR of Angeles City right now is 10.45. Okay. To end the pandemic, there must be herd immunity at every level of society. Therefore, it follows that at least 70% of all HAU employees and at least 70% of all students must have been fully vaccinated before we could say that the university will have achieved herd immunity. It is only under conditions of herd immunity when I could reasonably expect the national government to allow us to have face-to-face -face instruction in all modes of instruction, be it lecture or laboratory or clinicals, and in all degree programs, not only nursing, not only the medical sciences, not only engineering or IT, but also the arts and sciences, criminology, computing, and the other disciplines on campus. As of this morning, a total of 210 of our colleagues have received at least one dose, with 51 being fully vaccinated. More than two thirds, 71% to be exact, of our 727 employees have yet to be fully vaccinated. We still have a long way to go to achieve that herd immunity. The national vaccination strategy is to vaccinate or accelerate the vaccination of the NCR plus eight. And we belong to NCR plus eight. To accelerate the vaccination of the NCR plus eight, in order to protect the entire country. Because studies have shown that the COVID variants, the COVID-19 variants, enter the country, not only through the NCR, but also NCR plus eight, most likely starting with the NCR. So the next question then is, will there be enough vaccine doses to vaccinate the entire NCR plus eight? The answer is theoretically, yes, by the end of this November or December 
at the latest. Therefore, it is possible to achieve 40% to 50% vaccination of NCR plus eight for the containment of COVID-19 sometime in October. But to achieve herd immunity in the NCR plus eight before Christmas, every place in the NCR plus eight should be vaccinating at least 250,000 doses per day until November. In order to achieve no mask immunity threshold, the experience of the state of Israel suggests that the ADAR should be less than one per 100,000. In Angeles City, that translates to less than five new cases per day. And only then can we have a maskless Christmas and have our face-to-face -face Christmas tree lighting ceremony on campus. If HAU achieves herd immunity by the first week of December, we can plan on a Christmas tree lighting this December 10, which is traditionally we do during the second Friday of December. Otherwise, we are looking at December 9, 2022 at the earliest. The university is a servant and a critic of society. Every year, we will elect the leaders of our nation at various levels of government. It is part of our societal responsibility to prepare our students into becoming productive, ethical, and socially responsible citizens of our democratic republic. I enjoin you to encourage our grade 12 and college first year students in your classes to register to vote in the 2022 elections and to do whatever you can to achieve a 100% registration rate by our 18 year olds and above. The registration deadline is the end of September. Holy Angel University is all about students. We are a resilient community of faith with faculty and non-teaching staff, stakeholders and families committed to supporting each other and providing helping hands to our students. We will continue to navigate the uncharted territory of a new school year during the pandemic, but equipped with flexibility, agility, and a detailed plan. We can do all these together, arm in arm, and lifting each other's spirits. May all of you be blessed with good health, safety, happiness, and joy in this new school year. Thank you very much. Laos Dale Semper.